The election of Jair Bolsonaro is arguably an even greater disaster than the election of Donald Trump. This is a man who actively celebrates fascism, who wants to take Brazil back 50 years into its very darkest days when trade unionists were disappeared off the street, when thousands of people were tortured. A man who wants to destroy the biggest terrestrial ecosystem on Earth, the Amazon rainforests. This is a moment of great threat, a terrifying moment. But how did it come about? During Brazil's military dictatorship from the mid 60s to the mid 80s, resistance really accreted around liberation theology. Theologians who said that the church's mission was to the poor. And rather than just promising them a better afterlife, ensure that they have a better life on this earth. And what they did in Brazil was to create hope. They created a focus for opposition to the military dictatorship, to the land grabbers, to the oligarchs who were basically carving up the whole country, excluding the great majority of its people, and a way in which people could build politically and create a way out of poverty. One of the famous liberationists in Brazil was Dom Helder Camara, who is famous for saying, when I help the poor, they call me a saint. When I ask why they are poor, they call me a communist. This was really key to the end of the dictatorship and to the democratization of Brazilian society, but it was absolutely hated by some members of the church hierarchy and particularly by John Paul II and his kind of enforcer, Cardinal Ratzinger, who later became Pope Benedict, and they stamped it out. They imposed silences on priests. It culminated in silencing the primary exponent of liberation theology in Brazil, Leonardo Boff, in order to prevent him from speaking at the Earth Summit in Rio in 1992. Millions of people suddenly had no hope. They were suddenly deprived of the centers of organization which had allowed them to create these incredibly powerful movements. And the result of this was that the movement collapsed. And that collapse created an opening for a different kind of theology, evangelical Protestantism. The evangelical churches, many of them based in the US, moved into Brazil in droves and began preaching something completely different. The meek shall inherit the earth, so be meek. It's ungodly to fight the system. Just survive as best you can and you will inherit your reward in the next life. Oh, and let's speed things up a bit because when the apocalypse comes, the righteous will be lifted up and will sit at God's right hand while the unrighteous are cast into the fiery pit and there will be a great global vindication. And this apocalyptic strand in evangelical thought is far more important and dangerous than many people recognize. It's been a big deal in the United States where people go on evangelical tours to Israel to look at the site of Armageddon, see where it's all going to happen and see how they can accelerate the process towards the apocalypse. In common with Donald Trump, Bolsonaro wants to move the Brazilian embassy to Jerusalem. This is highly symbolic because for a start, it's basically saying we accept the occupation of the occupied territories, Israel, you can do what you like. But it also does tie in very strongly with this evangelical interest in apocalypse. Well, there's a very similar line of thinking in Brazil. And one way of accelerating the process, oh, you cut down all the rainforests, accelerate climate disaster. You push people towards desperation. And Bolsonaro is their candidate. He was pushed very hard by the Pentecostalist churches. A big part of the reason for his success is that religious following. So if you trace it back far enough, you can see this really as a failure on the part of the Catholic Church to build on this transformative movement to create structural change. The fact that that movement was killed has led indirectly over many years to the rise of the most dangerous man on earth. There was a time when the political left in Brazil was the leading global example of grassroots politics, of how to do it. Unfortunately, as often happens, the leadership became more and more detached from that grassroots and less and less accountable to it. And when it did so, it became vulnerable. There were corruption scandals and there was ultimately a kind of constitutional coup against the leadership of Dilma Rousseff, ensuring that the right could then take over, opening the way for Bolsonaro. Brazil is an extraordinary country. It's where I learnt my politics and I learnt it 
from mostly illiterate people fighting all the powers of the land. And I watched them win through a grassroots mobilization which I saw as the model for worldwide politics. They still know how to do that, despite the very dark days that Brazil has plunged into. What happens in Brazil is everybody's business, not least because if those rainforests are destroyed by Bolsonaro, we are screwed. And those rainforests store a phenomenal amount of carbon. If they are cut down and burnt, that carbon goes into the atmosphere. It will massively accelerate climate breakdown. It will also, of course, destroy the homes and lives of the millions of people who live across the Amazon, as well as opening up the whole region to shocking forms of exploitation and slavery, some of which I witnessed when I lived there, but will become much worse under Bolsonaro. This is the Brazilians' business, but it's also our business. Double Down, for principled reasons, does not run adverts. So it relies instead on your help. You can become a patron, provide a monthly donation, small, large, enormous, help this become the future of broadcasting that I think it is destined to be.